Amen, guys. Well, good morning. The title of the lesson this morning, in keeping with the theme for the month of July, is if, if I, if I remain in him. So if you would, please turn with me to John chapter 15. Now, such an important part of scripture as it takes place the night before Jesus is about to be crucified, arrested, and killed. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, RJ, didn't we just look at this like two weeks ago? Well, if you're, if you're thinking that, you're actually correct. But, you know, this is one of those scriptures where it's so nice, you got to read it twice. Are you guys with me here? Look at John chapter 15. If I remain in him. Now, mind you as well, as we read through, look for the different promises and guarantees that you see from Jesus directly in the scripture. You guys know how you got like the infomercials where it says you're going to love the product or your money back guarantee. You guys know what I'm talking about? I love uh, Aldi. I don't know if you guys ever shopped at Aldi. Yeah. <laughs> Aldi has the thing where they say twice as nice or your money back and the item replaced. Are you guys with me here? Yeah. And uh, I had bought dog food from Aldi to, to feed my dog. And it was, a, it was a large bag of dog food. And towards the end of the bag, what do I find but moldy dog food? Oh. And even a couple days before I found that, my dog was sick. He was vomiting. I, I don't even need to tell you the rest, but it was, it was horrible. And then I found that mold, and of course I had to hit up Aldi. Get my money back, get a new bag of dog food, all the above, whatever. So I go to the website, you fill out this claim, you fill out a form that you send to them. I took a picture of it and everything, showed them the moldy dog food. Yeah. I'm like, I can't wait to hear back. <laughs> Nothing, they ghosted me. <laughs> Called them? Nothing. See, they said guarantee, but did they follow up on their guarantee? No. Well, here's the, I don't want to bash Aldi. I, I still shop at Aldi. I, I still love the place. I just might not buy dog food anymore. But, but I love the place. But you have the world that offers these promises and guarantees that doesn't follow through. Jesus is not like that. He follows through on all of his guarantees. But check out in the scriptures here what he guarantees us. You guys with me here? John 15, verse 1. This is Jesus talking here in the red letters. I am the true vine and my father, the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me. And I will remain in you. Yeah. Come on. Already there's a few promises here, but I want to focus in on what we just read. Yeah. Hence the title, Jesus says right here, remain in me mm -hmm. and I will remain in you. Yeah. But you might notice something about this promise. There's two parts. Mm -hmm. There's two ways. It's a two-way street, yeah. mm -hmm. not one. Just like any great friendship. Right. Yeah. You guys have any of those friends that don't put any effort into the relationship? Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully none of those friends are here in this room, amen. <laughs> Thanks for being open, bro. <laughs> or maybe you're saying the other way, right? Okay. <laughs> it happens, right? Yep. But how do you feel about that friend that doesn't put any effort into the relationship? Do you feel particularly close to that person? No, no right? It, it takes effort from both sides. Yeah. There, and there's no difference with Jesus. 
You know, I've heard this saying before, maybe you've heard it, where people have said, don't cross oceans for a person that won't cross a puddle for you. Oh. Have you guys ever heard that? Yeah. Well, there are people that have said that, and most likely those people have been hurt before by people. But I heard someone spiritualize it. I really like this one. The spiritualized version was, yes, cross oceans. And cross your puddles, if you would. Because that's exactly what Jesus did. Wow. Jesus did cross oceans. But you know what? It is still on us to cross our puddle. Because yeah. <laughs> Jesus might be crossing that ocean, taking up his cross. It's still on us to cross our puddle. Yeah. Because our, our cross is kind of more like a puddle in comparison yeah, yeah. to Jesus' ocean. Maybe even just a drop, if we're being honest with ourselves here. <laughs> Like a little drop of sweat in comparison. <laughs> but we still got to put in our end of the effort. Because he says right here, look, in order for me to remain in you, you've got to remain in me. Let's continue to read. It says, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I'm the vine, you're the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Yeah, emphasis on the nothing right there. You know, when I think about my life before Jesus, that's, I can't think of any other word. That's the only thing that comes to mind. Nothing. This world, without Jesus, what does it have to author but nothing? When you see it for what it really is. If we continue to read verse 6. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. Wow. So right here is another promise. The first one made by Jesus was, hey, you remain in me, I'll remain in you. Mm -hmm. The next is, if you don't remain in me, this is what happens. Yeah. Says that the branch, it's going to wither, wow. die, fall off, be thrown into the fire and burned. Mm -hmm. wow. Now, I don't really need to tell you exactly what that means. I think the, the visual is in, so, pretty self-explanatory, right? <laughs> But it's powerful. Yeah. You, you can get the motivation both ways. Right. By remaining in Jesus, you get to stay in him and live a meaningful, purpose-driven life. Yeah. Yeah. But without him falling off, yeah. scary. Yeah. Yeah. Let's continue to read. Uh, verse 7. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Wow. Again, another promise. He says, if you remain in me, ask whatever you wish. Now, when I read this a couple weeks ago, I mentioned this, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and mention it again. Amen. It's good for memory, right? They say sometimes you got to hear things several times in order for it to stick in there. But he does make the promise that if you remain in me, ask whatever you wish. Think about that. Your wildest dreams and desires answered. Sounds pretty great, right? Here, here's the thing that I want to set straight. I want to set the record straight. God is not against you. Yeah. Let me say it again. God is not against you. Although we may feel like that. We may feel like the whole world is against us. If you feel that way, that's actually correct because the world is against you. <laughs> I'll get into that here in a minute. But the one thing I can guarantee, the one person who is not, is God. God desires to bless you. God desires for you to live your best life. Literally. 
<laughs> no cap. I noticed I got a lot more reaction on this side. The more mature disciples are like, he's not wearing a hat or what? No cap means no lie. Yeah. You got you gotta keep up with the lingo. It's it changes daily. Super vibey. All right, let's get back into the scripture because Jesus says that it's lit, fam. Getting back to what I was saying, verse 7. <laughs> God does want to give you the desires of your heart. He wants to answer your prayers. The thing that will prevent him from doing that is motives. Is motives. When we are not remaining in Jesus, when we are not doing the will of God, our motives are skewed. There are things that we may even want that are, that are godly. Getting married is godly. That's, that's of God. God created man and woman to be together. That's literally why man created woman. After, or, yeah, why God created woman. Sorry. God created man first so that he was lonely. Brothers, if you're lonely, listen up. <laughs> Because God saw that man needed a suitable helper. Yeah. And out came women. Yeah. God, God, if that's the desire of your heart to start dating and be married, God wants that for you too. I can't speak for everybody, but I'm pretty sure that's what God wants for you. Yeah. <laughs> there, there are things that we could even want, but if... We want it for the wrong reasons or out of a wrong heart or out of a wrong motive. God simply cannot and will not bless it. God wants to give you the desires of your heart. Check your own heart, though, and make sure that the motives are godly. You guys with me here? All right. Enough on that. Verse 9. As the Father has loved me... So have I loved you. Woo. Now remain in my love. Wow. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. Wow. Just as I have obeyed my father's commands and remain in his love. Wow. wow. Going along with what he's saying, Jesus takes it to the next level here. He says, remain in me. But how do you do this? By remaining in my love. Wow. You know, I think that's, um, that's the challenge for a lot of Christians. Mm -hmm. People that have even been Christians for some time. Mm -hmm. Is falling out of love, if you would, mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. He says, remain in my love. Right. And just remember that the love of God is unlike any other love you could ever experience. And my hope today is that each of us could, will make a decision to stay in God's love. Yeah. To, not, to not grow numb. Mm -hmm. To not be stagnant in God's love. Yeah. And to not forget. Yeah. Think back. You, did you guys ever have in school, maybe middle school or high school, a crush? Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> You guys ever have that middle school crush and you just got so giddy for her? <laughs> So excited. And uh, maybe you even pass notes to that person. Oh, 
Maybe the newer generation, it was already by texting, but... For me, in middle school, I used the notes. And you guys ever get caught passing the notes, and the teacher's like, RJ, do you want to read that in front of the whole class? And then you read it. Do you like me? Yes or no? And then you get it back, and not only is it circled no, but there's like an exclamation point. I'm like, I'm like, I don't remember writing an exclamation point on this. Was that just me? Okay, amen. It was actually Goldana. That, I'm just kidding. Oh, you rejected him? No, I'm only kidding. I'm kidding. But, but. I, I use that example to just think of how excited you were with like an old crush and you, just, you wanted to talk to that person you were so nervous and you got butterflies in your belly and, and you just wanted to pass the notes and, or text them or call them and you were just so excited. But think back to when you first fell in love with God too. Think of the joy you had you just couldn't wait to read your Bible. Or you, you couldn't wait to go to church and worship God. Yes. You couldn't wait to just pray to God. Yes. Spend every living moment with Him that you could. Yes. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Have, have you fallen out of that? Has your heart grown hard to that? Have, have you lost that? That honeymoon feeling with God. The the first step of remaining in or remaining in Jesus, remaining in a relationship with Him, is remaining in His love. And, and here's the thing: you can always count on it one way. Jesus loves you unconditionally. Let me tell you, don't, don't mess with that relationship right there. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have many people, if any, that will love you the way that God loves you. Yeah. Unconditionally, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter where you go, so he is never throwing that love away. Yeah. Cherish it. Yeah. Take full advantage of it. Yeah. Stay in that love. Yeah. Practice it every day. You ever given your heart to somebody that didn't give it in return? You guys remember that heartbreak? It, are we just going to sweep it underneath the rug? No, I want to talk about it a little bit. Let's be real with ourselves here. Are you guys with me, church? Heartbreak doesn't feel good. In fact, it's probably one of the worst feelings in the world. I've been there too, guys. Don't get me wrong. We've, I think we've all been there, right? We can all say that. Carlos is in back. No, not me. <laughs> no, I'm just picking on Carlos. He nodded. He said yes. <laughs> I know we've all felt that way, but trust me, you will never feel that way with God. We've got to be willing to, to open our hearts fully to God. And not only that, part of trusting and remaining in Jesus, you know what, I'm, I'm going to get to that part here. We're, we're about to get to that. I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil the surprise. <laughs> Let's keep on reading. Where did I leave off here? Verse 10? Yes. Okay, verse 11. So, of course, verse 10, just backtracking a little bit. He says, remain in my love. How do you do that? Obeying his commands. 
Verse 11. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. There it is again. God wants you to experience joy. 100%. At the end of the day, isn't that what all of us just want? Isn't that what all people want? I don't think I've yet to met a person that desires to be unhappy. That desires to be depressed. That desires to be unfulfilled. At the end of the day, we all want joy. Right? And joy may, might look differently for all of us. And it certainly throughout the world looks differently as people are seeking joy in all these different places. Right? And Jesus says outright right here, straight up, I want my joy to be complete in you. And that true joy comes from a relationship with him. So verse 12. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Oh, that's pretty straightforward. How did Jesus love you? Look in uh, verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. He says, look, greater love is no bigger than this right here, laying down your life for your friends. And Jesus says straight up, look, you're my friends. And of course, he laid down his life for you. But it goes for us as well. There's no greater love than something you're willing to lay down your life for. You know, I, I would lay down my life for Goldana, my wife. Well, no doubt, 100%. But I would do the same for the rest of you. And it brings me a lot of joy that you guys would do the same for me as well. Amen. <laughs> that, that's what makes God and his kingdom so great. Because you don't find this anywhere else in the world. You have people that are motivated by, by fear, by selfish ambition, trying to get ahead in life and putting down other people while they go at it. But yet to have people that genuinely love you so very much that they would lay down their own lives for you? Yeah. Sold. Yeah. I don't know about you guys. And Jesus says, you are my friends if you do what I command. For disciples of Jesus, we get to actually say that Jesus is our friend. Yeah. Jesus accepted that friend request. And he didn't hit unfollow either. Know those people that'll follow just to hit unfollow? So they got their like... That's not Jesus right there, amen? Verse 15. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. Oh, again, Jesus says, look, I call you friends. That you did not choose me, but I chose you. Again, to go and to bear fruit. Now, we talked about it last time. The fruit he's talking about here, the fruit that will last is, is making disciples. Yeah. But we, we also cannot neglect the fruit of the Spirit that we see in Galatians chapter 5. Right. You don't have to turn there, but if you want to write it down, sure. You could look at it on your own time. Mm -hmm. The fruit of the Spirit is kindness, joy, peace, love, forbearance, goodness. It's probably a lot more than I'm forgetting off the top of my head. Yeah. But that, isn't that the type of life that we all want to live? And then again, he says, I will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love 
each other. Let's keep on reading. I have, um, I gave myself 30 minutes today, and uh, I think I'm about five minutes in. So we're going to keep on going. (laughs) I'm only kidding. We're going to begin to close out here. Verse 18. I don't have uh, I don't have any points for you guys. I simply want you to just reflect on remaining in Jesus. And look at this as we close out. I believe it wraps it up so beautifully. Come on, bro. Remember how a little bit ago I mentioned the world and how the whole world is against you? Yeah. This is that part. This is that part. Verse 18. If the world hates you, see, there it is. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. See, Jesus always got to have the first word. He's like, look, I did it before it was cool, all right? If the world hates you, it hated me first, okay? Just remember that. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember the words I spoke to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, well, they'll persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they'll obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. That's very comforting from Jesus right there. He says, look, as you go and you live your life and you imitate me, Jesus, you live life like I did, people will persecute you. They persecuted me as well. But you know what? If they obeyed my teaching and you go and you proclaim my teaching, they'll obey the word of God as well. So find comfort in that. Amen. If you've endured or received persecution for living your life that Jesus, the way that Jesus wants you to, it will come through. There are people that want to hear it. Amen. Verse 22. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. Now, however, they have no excuse for their sin. And we'll go ahead and stop right there. I want to close with this as Jesus just straight up says, look, there's no excuse. There's no excuse for sin. And I want to be real with you guys. Can I be real with you guys? Are are you sure? Can I be real with you guys? Okay. We as people, we love excuses. Mankind, we love excuses. Some of us might even got too excited when uh, the pandemic came, and then we get to just chill in our house all day long. (laughs) The excuse of not having to go into work. (laughs) Or the gym. (laughs) But we as people, we, we love to make excuses. But I'm here to tell you today that when we come before God, when we are face to face to him, there is no excuse that is reasonable. There really is. You may be able to bring excuse before man, but there is no excuse before God. When you come before God, you can't say, well, God, you don't understand. I, I had to finish my education. Didn't you know that I'm studying and I'm going to become an important lawyer one day? I had to finish my education. No shade towards Taylor. Taylor's going to be a ministry leader. Or, or God, don't you know it? I really love that guy. Or I really love that girl. God, didn't you know that I couldn't just give it up? God, didn't you know how much joy it brought me? There is no excuse that God's going to be able to take. 
You're not going to be able to face God and say, but God, there was traffic. <laughs> For us, that traffic is our life. Wow. Everything that is getting in the way and preventing us from genuinely seeking after a relationship with God. Yeah. Genuinely throwing off anything that would prevent us. Yeah. Genuinely remain, be, becoming in Christ and remaining in Christ. Yeah. There is no excuse. Yeah. My urge to you is don't make any excuses in your relationship yeah. with God. Don't allow anything, anyone, or even yourself to hold you back from giving all of your heart wide open to the Lord. I love you guys. To God be all the glory if I remain in him.